Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much to all of you who found the time to join us. Belarus Institute of Arts and Sciences Canada and Belarus and Canadian Alliance welcome you to the presentation of the new book, Belarus and Fine Art, Time and Time Again, by Dr. Zina Gimpilevich. Великий дякую, что вы пришли сегодня до нас. Белорусский институт науки и мастерства из гуртования Беларусов в Канаде сердечно запрошает вас на презентацию новой книги доктора Зины Гимпилевич. Я переклав назву, как белорусское выявленное мастерство из нового из нового. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are gathering here today on Anishinaabe, Algonquin, unceded and unsurrendered territory. Перш чем мы почнем, я хотел бы отзначить, что мы собираемся тут сегодня на неотступной территории Анишинаби Алгонки. Доктор Зина Гемпилевич is a professor emerita at the University of Waterloo in Canada. She earned a, a PhD in Slavic studies in 1987 from Waterloo University. Before her appointment at the University of Waterloo in 1990, Gimpilevich worked uh, for the Department of uh, External Affairs and the Ottawa U. Her current research interests are Belarusian history, literature, and fine art. Dr. Gimpilevich authored nine books, 17 book chapters, over 80 articles, co-authored two textbooks, and gave over 80 presentations at uh, conferences. In addition to her leadership in many professional and non-profit organizations, Gimpilevich served as a president of uh, Belarusian Institute of Arts and Sciences Canada and the president and the past president of the Canadian Association of Slavists. She's an honorary lifetime member of three professional and community organizations. Her book, the portrayal of Jews in modern Belarusian literature has won the Canadian Association of Slavists Taylor and Francis Book Prize in 2019. And today you will see her latest book, Belarusian Fine Art, time and time again. Dr. Zina Gimpilevich, honorary professor, University Universiteta Waterloo in, in Canada. Ina atrimala stupin da doktora filosofiji u Universiteti Atavi u 1987. godi. Da svojho priznačenja v Universitetu Waterloo u 1990. godi Gimpilević pracovala v Departmenti zamirnih sprav i v Atavskem Universiteti. Cepir je novokovi interesi istorije Belarusi, literatura i vijavljenče mastarstvo. Doktor Gimpilević zjevljajca avtorem devjeti knjih 17 книжных разделов, больше за 80 артикулов, с автором двух подручников и выступов с больше чем 80 докладов на конференциях. У додаток до керавництва шматликими профессийными и некоммерцийными организациями Емпелевич была президентом Белорусского института науки и мастерства в Канаде, а так само президентом Канадской ассоциации славистов. И она является гоноровым по жизнью сябром трех профессийных и громадских организаций. Я и книга, снова я переклав, как в образ ябрея у сочастной белорусской литературы, отримала книжную премию Канадской ассоциации славянистов Тейлора и Фрэнсиса в 2019 году. И сегодня вы увидите и опошнюю книгу «Белорусское выявленное мастерство снова и снова». This event is a bit unique because the author has brought to our attention unknown or ignored connections of so many great artists to Belarus and its culture. Also, you see many talented artists in this room who you might not be familiar with but are mentioned in the book and live here in Ottawa Garden. Ivonka Survila, Piotr Schwarzman, Alina Lyapko. They have turned this room into the art gallery. And you'll have the opportunity to hear from them today as well. Эта падея крыху уникальная, потому что перед усим автор звернул нашу увагу на невядомые, 
проигнорованы связи великой колькости выдатных творцев с Беларуси и культуры. И так само в этой зале вы бачите талинаитых мастаков, которые сгадываются у книги и живут тут, у Атави Гатину. И снова Иван Косырвилла, Петр Шварцман и Алина Ляпко. Это, я не перетворили эту залю в мастерскую галерею. We have limited number of copies of this book and some original work of artists for purchase. Uh, all proceeds from this event will be donated to the Rehabilitation Center in Kyiv in Ukraine. У нее есть обмежеванная колькость особников книги и некоторые оригинальные працы и мастаков на продажу. Все сродки, отрыванные от этого мероприятия, будут накированы у реабилитационный центр у Киеве в Украине. And now I would like to ask uh, Ivonka Servila, then Dr. Halina Tamilovich and Yuri Shamechka to say a couple of words. А теперь хотел бы попросить Ivonka Servila, Dr. Halina Gimpilevich, а потом Yuri Shamechka сказать пару слов. Дякую. I am going to uh, speak English after I say a few words in Belarusian. Дякую, дякую, дякую. Як вам усім відомо, про Білорусь світ вельмі мало ведає. І я ще меж ведав не так давно, перед тим, як ми почали працювати, каб доведався. Працюємо ми вже тут така у Канаді, больше 50 годов на это. Теперь, когда после часом крыху помогли, помогла революция, спокойная революция 20 -го года в Беларуси, люди больше начали ведать. Але перед тем вельми тяжко было добиться до, до чужих и рассказать им про Беларусь. Отразу первые слова были «So you are Russian». Это нас вельми клопотило, переживали, робили, что могли. Cap, um, cap heta piramachi. So I am, I am trying to say in Belarusian how little known Belarus was in Canada and in other Western countries until the latest period. In fact, until the 20th, 2020, uh, the rev revolution in August three years ago, when uh, our people went out on the streets in Minsk to show their hate of the dictatorship, which they have to, uh, have to uh, live with, and uh, um, express their wish to be free, independent, normal European country. Um, we have begun to work on this a long time ago. Uh, Zina has done a tremendous uh, work in order to put Belarus on the maps of at least Canada, but also of the world. She has uh, talked about, she has written about literature, about fine arts, as uh, Sasha said, fine arts, um, uh, history. Um, every subject, Belarusian subject, was of interest to her. <coughs> and she made it known to many people because she was writing in foreign languages and people had to read it. For example, Biko. Biko is one of Belarusian best writers. The first book published in English about Biko was by Zina Hibelevich, a beautiful book. Um, you may have heard about the Canadian Relief Fund for Chernobyl victims in Belarus. This is a a few of, no, of, our, of us in Canada think that it's the most important job we ever did in our life. We, um, after Chernobyl, we brought 5,500 children to Canada for a respite. We saved the lives of many. Uh, we established good relations with Canadians who became uh, some kind of family for the Belarusian children who came here and who have continued to help them until now. We have worked together with Zina. We were a few, we began, we were a few women to begin that. And Zina has worked as much as uh, all of us. Not as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. No. <laughs> so that was another way to put Belarus on the maps of Canada, because all these people who brought children from Belarus were doing a tremendous work to raise money for the children. So everybody, all the people around them, 42 chapters in Canada, began to speak about Belarus. That is just another example of our work for Belarus. But uh, Zina has also tried to show the world the qualities of our people, the talent, the uh, um, generosity, uh, the welcoming uh, qualities for, to everybody. In Belarus, my parents were telling me that in Belarus, when you were traveling, you didn't have to, some time ago when I was a child, you didn't have to, to look for a hotel. You could just go into any house and ask whether you can spend the night there, and people did accept you. In a, not, so, not, only, not only accept you, but receive you with friendly, you know, like with friendship. That was uh, uh, some of the qualities of Belarus. But there is also the talent of Belarusians. The Belarusians, for some reason, are extremely talented, and extremely talented people, maybe more than many of our neighbors. Not the Latvians, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we, um, in Belarus, they were saying that every second person is a poet. There are, uh, Zina has written, she will tell you about the painters she has uh, written about, cr close to 200 painters born in Belarus, who are now, who have become world known. They are not just, uh, she's not talking about the ones, the 3,000 or so of painters who live in Belarus presently, but but painters who have become very known in the world under the name of Russians, Poles, whatever. And uh, nobody knows that, nobody, no. Now more people know, but it took us time to, uh, to tell people that Chagall is not a Russian, that Sutin is not a Russian. Sutin comes from the center of Belarus. That um, uh, Kikoyin, uh, Lipschitz, Zatkin, Segal, uh, Kremen, all these people of the School of Paris came from Belarus. We are, in fact, Belarusians were the founders of the School of Paris. Who knows that? I'm sure none of you have heard about it. Oh, one. <laughs> we have given a tremendous uh, patrimoine, uh, which means heritage to the world uh, cultural heritage to the world, and people don't even know it was we had done that. So this is why Zina's book is so very important. It is not only a wonderful book, you will love reading it, but it shows what we have done for humanity, and humanity wasn't able to see that and to recognize us. Uh, Zina will tell her feelings about the beginning of her work, and uh, I have felt often the same thing. We had to fight everywhere to, to prove that we are not Russians, that we are Belarusians, that it, there is another country between Poland and Russia, uh, and Russia about which you, you are forgetting, etc. And this is something I have had said maybe thousands of times to people. Uh, in the people who came from Belarus um, probably haven't lived through that because they didn't have to do to, to deal with foreigners. So they knew they were Belarusians, they, 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 there were no problems from that. They had to fight for their Belarusians, but they were Belarusians. But outside Belarus, Belarusians everywhere had to, had to work in order to put Belarus on the maps of the world. Uh, even as late as 1993, I was at a conference at the Parliament uh, of Canada where Canada, where people were talking about how to help the people who were before in the Soviet Union. Not a word about Belarus. So I had to get up and tell them that you forget about the best kept secret of Europe. There is another country. 
there is Belarus, and nothing has been done to help Belarus. So um, this is a story of our life. Um, Zina also has shown a incredible, incredibly valuable thing. As you know, uh, the Jewish ethnicity has had lots of problems in the world everywhere. Zina has shown how well they well they they were uh, received and how how friendly the relationship relationship was between our people and the Jewish ethnicity in Belarus. We didn't have pogroms in Belarus. The pogroms in Belarus were only a few along the, the, the borders of other countries, of Russia. Uh, otherwise, um, Belarusian, for example, during the Holocaust, refused to go and kill Jews. It was, it is uh, in, the, in the documents from Germany, uh, from the German archives, uh, you have complaints about the German uh, army complains that the locals don't want to kill the Jews. You know? We have had six centuries of common life, peaceful, sometimes of course we had uh, different interests, but we succeeded to live peacefully for six centuries. There's not many other countries who could tell that. Zina has talked about it in several books, and one of them which got the Price, which we're talking about, a uh, portrait of Jews in Belarusian literature, where she chose the greatest Belarusian writers to speak about the relationship, how they wrote about Jews, and how, what the relationship was, was between Varadulin and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, between all the, yeah, all the, uh, all, all, all our great painters. Uh, she mentions them in her book, and she has received a, uh, a medal for that because of the quality of the book and the interest of the book. So um, the last book is something which is particularly dear to my heart because as a painter, it hurts me more than maybe non-painters to hear Belarusian painters uh, in the world called all kinds of, by all kinds of name except Belarusian. Uh, and that's why I am very, I love the book and I um, think that it's one of the most precious presents Zina has done to our people uh, by letting the world know that about 170 or so, great, 80, great painters born in Belarus are, have enriched the, uh, uh, the history, the art history, art, art history of the world, and people don't even know they are from Belarus. So Zina, thank you for that Im immense work you have done. Um, I know how hard it was, how much of your uh, silo <laughs> you have uh, dedicated to it. But I think this book is going to, to, to stay in our history. Thank you very much. Добре, пробачте, я не рихтовала по ангельску, тому literally a couple of words, a couple of remarks, commentaries in, in Belarusian. Sorry about that. Я прийшла сьогодні вельмі неофіційно, завсёди я приходила неофіційно, і коли я кажу неофіційно, тому гэта значить, гэта мне вельмі тёпла до гэтага, тому що я сюди прийшла Подтримать, пробачьте, по-перше, своего мужа Петра Борисовича Шварцмана, повитать у всех э, инших мастаков, которые тут живут, э, разом с ним, и Алену Ляпко, и так само, зразумела ж, нашу 
дорогую господарню Ивонку Сурвила. И, нарешті, я хотела повиншовать с выходом такой зна знаковой так, працы э, вас, дорогая профессор Зина Гимпелевич. А, написать такую працу, историк, могу свечить, это собрать и систематизовать такие велизарный материал, это уже оно само по себе имеет велизарное значение. И оно имеет значение для науки, для развития дальнейшего науки, где бы не жили науковцы. Но одна справа для науковцев, и они могут на подставе этой книги, на базе этой працы взять, например, я не веду, одного мастака, те, например, представников той, те, те, той, те иншей школы, те направку, и уже там копать глубоко, але они будут иметь перед собой такую уникальную изъяву, как такая праца. И такие працы, они за все дни вельми а, мают великую каштовность. А, а кроме новоколцев, есть так само просто люди, которые интересуются, которые могут интересоваться персонально, те, не веду, из какого там пункта гледжения, для них это так само, эта книга имеет великую вартость, потому что они могут оглядеть и побачить, кто из каких мест, районов были выходцы из Беларуси, мастаки. Заразумело, они могли быть этнично белорусы, габреи, кто за угодно, но это очень великая праца. Я еще ее не читала, но с великим задовольнением прочитаю. А, как, я, я ведаю, что я так само найду нечто для себя, персонально для себя, ее то, что крайне и мне. Дякую великий. Ну и коли уже зусим зусим персонально. А, хотелось бы, это не до нас. Мы, ты, кто тут собрался, мы это а, поважаем и шануем. Але хотелось бы, как а, молодшие генерации, поколение наших детей, унуков, так само, а, так само цикавились нашей культурой, а, нашими культурами, если мы так скажем, а, не глядя на то, в какую зараз тяжкую годину для нашей цивилизации мы живем, а это то, что нас может подтримать, утримать. И на оглу это, когда мы говорим про белорусскость, еврейскость, неважно, все оно может триматься только тогда, когда наши дети и иншие поколения будут в это потребовать. Дякую за увагу и дякую великий еще раз с подарением, профессор. Вот, я хотел так само поменьшевать Зину с выходом и книжки, и хотел несколько слов сказать про саму книгу. И, э, а кроме слов подяки, я не могу ничего добавить. Вот, первое все, я вам... А, а, а я хочу вам рассказать... А я хочу вам рассказать историю, которая отбылась у Торонто в несколько, несколько э, тыдней тому. Мы наведывали Торонто и наведывали галерею Онтарио. Вось. И когда мы зашли в зале, которая присвечена мастерству 20-го стагодзе, одразу кинулись в очи, это Шагал э, над Витебском, вось. и картина Сутина, э, «Вязковая церква». Вось. Я разглядал эти картины, але меня удивило то, что я нашел знакомое с детства мне слово. Эти слова были «Беларусь», «Смиловичи», «Шагал», Витебск, Лезна. И я подумал, вот нечто такое изменилось, потому что, когда я ранее приходил в галерею, за все это было написано, когда это была картина Шагала, то это обовязково Рашин. У Метрополитен, у Нью-Йорке, когда мы глядели картины Сутина, чему это была Литвания. Я не веду, чему Литва. А лет теперь я подумал, что вот нечто изменилось. И, и вот нечто изменилось, и теперь эти картины, и они уже белорусские и ассоциируются с белорусскими мастаками. Тогда про несколько дней я потелефоновал Зине. Вот. И она мне рассказала эту историю, что она так само пришла в, в галерею Торонто вот. и побачила, что картины Шагалы подписаны Рашин, 
что по, по картины Сутина подписаны, ну, вот не, не, не из усим зразумело подписаны. И она сама сказала мне, что она учинила там скандал. И она пошла к куратору, и она сказала, что это, это все то, что вы написали, не зусим отповедая той истории, которая иснавала, и, и том, тому месту, якому и, 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 и мастаки в этом месте народились. И это стало так, что ситуация изменилась, и теперь мы видим, что у галереи э, Торонто эти мастаки народились там, где они народились. Народились в Беларуси. И это было для меня великое, великий гонор, то, что Зина заработала. А теперь она заработала наступный срок. Теперь она написала не только про Шагала, теперь она не только про Сутина, а она нашла сотню белорусских мастаков, которыми треба гонориться. И, и гонориться нам, этой нации, которую ховали шмат и стагодзями, и, и казали, что мы ну, не то, что ничего не варты, а ну, мы не совсем... Такие. И то, что у нас забирали, это належало другим народам. Тому я удячный вам, Зина, за то, что вы протягиваете этот крок, протягиваете эту працу вертания нашей исторической справедливости, нашей исторической памяти. Показываете нам, что мы европейский народ, что мы народ, который дал свету великих мастаков и, 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 и шмат заработал для того, как свет бачу эту прохожость, бачу прохожость Витебская, бачу прохожость нашей родной Беларуси. Тому я дякую вам сегодня за то, что вы есть, за то, что вы протягиваете эту працу. Я ожидаю вам, чтобы эта праца не скончалась, покуль мы завсюды про это размовляем. Потому что, когда я завсюды телефоную Зине, я отключаюсь, я думаю, что я не у Канады, а я вот у Беларуси. Настолько мы завсюды, завсюды говорим про Беларусь, завсюды говорим про белорусских поэтов, завсюды говорим про Быкова, завсюды говорим про белорусских мастаков. Тому я удячный вам за это, удячный за вашу працу, удячный за, вашу, за, за ваше разумение, за вашу правду, за вашу смелость. Так что вам всего доброго и мы будем разом с вами читать ваши книжки и радоваться, что мы Соправдный европейский народ, что нам есть что показать свету и будем протягивать. Вот. И на заканчение я только хочу сказать, что Калисте я написал верш, вот, шагал, и присвятил ее этот верш Зине Гемпелевич. И вот эта тема, белорусская тема, якая учить в этом верше, что мы будем выучать Беларус, Беларусь по картинах Марка Шагала, и она протягивается. И когда мы будем читать книги, когда мы будем глядеть картины этих мастаков, мы будем глядеть на Беларусь и будем эту Беларусь ведать и будем снова и снова находить нечто новое. Наше житё не наступит двойче, не станет давним, не пойдя прама. А мы можливо полетим одной як на картинах Марка Шагала. Возбегнем журботы своего молчания, Витебск, Лезна, домы, небы хмары, Беларусь, тема для выучания по картинах Марка Шагала, Зеленый скрипач, житье без отчаю, Блокитный дом, а солнца так мало, Кропельки фарбы, мовы учания у родках Вершов Мойши Шагала. Велизарнейшие Меша Тичувать. Велизарнейшие дякую. Huge thank you to every single person who is here today. Um, just look around you. Uh, do I have to give a lecture? Actually, Joanna, Sasha, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, конечно, Юрась, уже все сказали. 
Али кали маете терпение, да я почну, добра. Like you write, I will start with uh, a poem by Chagall. First in Belarusian, and then I will translate it into English. Is it okay? Моя родима. Моя родима есть живе у душе моей. Вы разумеете? И как знайсти туды, мне не потребна виза. Коли мне дрэнна, и она отшувая гэта. Кладе у ложек и ласкаво обдымая, я крабила мать. My motherland is in my soul. Do you understand? I came in there without an entrance visa. When I am lonely, she sees to it. She puts me to bed and she wraps me up as mother did. Greetings, everyone. Uh, am I okay with this microphone? Mm? Uh, I'm very happy to see friends, old friends who are not old, and new faces. Thank you so much for coming. Just take a look around. You don't need, you don't need my book. Just look at the pictures of three of our very, very talented artists. But anyways, since I wrote it, I'll have to deliver. Uh, I've been told that new friends, Russian and uh, Latvian speakers, are joining us today. Welcome. And many thanks for your support. Regarding languages, in one of my interviews with uh, Vasil Bykel, our most significant writer, I asked him about the writer's use of language in Belarus. Here is his response, and I quote, we have many nationalities in our country. My best friend, a Belarusian writer, Alice Adamovich, writes in Russian. A Belarusian Jewish writer can write in Hebrew or Yiddish. A Belarusian writer of Tatar's origin can write in Arabic. My own choice is my native Belarusian, the language of my soul. Today, Belarusian is also a language of most of our souls, isn't it? Uh, but uh, today's presentation will be in English. Are you, uh, is anyone not okay with that? Are you okay with? <laughs> Uh, which is the language of our new country. I feel, I feel humbled and grateful for your participation in this talk dedicated to my recent book, Belarusian Fight Art, Time and Time Again, Origin, History, Discourse, and Biographies. Thank you for sharing interest in Belarusian fine art and the book that it represents. Isn't it powerful that Chagall pronounces the words mother and motherland in the same breath in his poem? What do you think? Would you agree? No? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I hope my research proves that every artist's view of the book confirms the same affiliation and the same feeling with the motherland as it is expressed by Mark Chagall. Uh, we do understand. Uh, and now, uh, if you don't mind, uh, let's move to another notion. We all understand the idiom of English poet, cleric, and soldier, John Donne, 1572-1631. Uh, uh, no man is an island. I will dare say that neither is a woman. Therefore, I would like to express my gratitude to those who made me feel part of the community and helped my work materialize. First of all, it is the Surveilla family. 
In connection with the above, I apologize for the wrong response given to Yuras Shamitka during our last meeting conference. On his question, uh, question, how did I learn the Belarusian language, I said that it came to me by itself. But this is wrong. That was a wrong answer, Yuras. Nothing comes from nothing, as we all know. I guess I was too tired that day and didn't think properly. Please accept my apologies. In reality, everything is connected and depends on circumstances since no one is an island. I got involved in the language thanks to the Surabila family. And here is how it occurred. My professor at Ottawa University, Bogdan Piaskac, happened to be the best friend of Janka Survila. He was also a certified Canadian government simultaneous translator. This work was in addition to his teaching duties at Ottawa U. At my time, Bogdan Piaskac was the only full professor at the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures at Ottawa University. Professor Piaskac was a great tutor and the most, most learned person I ever encountered in my entire life. During one of our classes, he gave us a task translating and transliterating into English an old text, a couple of paragraphs, written in the language of the country of birth. The class comprised students from Poland, Germany, Latvia, France, Lithuania, Russia, Ukraine, the Czech Republic, and other places. My piece was from an old Belarusian chronicle the only thing I remember that it was in Latinka, which means that most probably it happened in, in the beginning, at least in the beginning uh, of the 16th century. I submitted my report, he approved it and asked me where I was born, I said in Minsk. He stated that his best friends are Belarusians and that most likely they would like to meet me. He asked for my phone number that evening, a phone rang, and I heard a lovely woman's voice. She greeted me in Belarusian and said, our friend Bogdan Pleskac told us that you are from Belarus. Would you come with your family to our place for dinner on Saturday tomorrow? He will be there as well. You don't have a car, do you? Of course we didn't. It is not a problem. My husband will pick you up and bring you home after dinner. I think you guessed that the voice belonged to... Thank you. <laughs> after that dinner, uh, we saw each other almost weekly. Soon, the Turvilla's family love and understanding of our birth country ignited a genuine interest in me for Belarusian art, for Belarusian language, and for everything Belarusian. The Trudeau introduced me to other Belarusians in Canada and the United States. In terms of grammar, I studied it from two volumes of Mrs. Valentina Pashkevich. Her sister, Dr. Arisa Zhukhrishkevich, brought me to their home. I wish everyone would see this home, from floor to ceiling, here and there. Everything was in bookshelves. Uh, you couldn't step, uh, make a small step <laughs> in this house <laughs> without uh, touching a, bo a bookshelf. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Valentina Paskevich was very kind to me and uh, she gifted me two volumes of her uh, textbooks. Uh, and she even made an inscription. Actually, from time to time, the University of Waterloo students asked me to teach them the Belarusian language. These were students whose families hosted Belarusian uh, kids from our Ch Chernobyl Foundation 
uh, Joanna talked earlier. For those lessons, I used the textbooks of Mrs. Valentina Pashkevich and continued to learn Belarusian language uh, together with my students. In these terms, I'm very grateful to the University of Waterloo. Unlike many USA and Great Britain universities, our salary did not depend directly on how many courses we teach. Of course, indirectly it is, but not directly. And we are free to pick and develop our own courses. So it happened. And now I am returning to the Surveillas family and uh, our countrymen and women. Most of them are no more. Thus, the recent, lo uh, recent losses of friends and tutors are felt with profound grief. For me, the first loss was over our dear Yanka Survila, followed by doctors Boris Rahulia, Raisa Zhukhrishkevich, Vitaut Kipil, and Yanka Zaprudnik. Indeed, we should remember that thanks to that generation, we can continue their work today. The most hurtful, of course, is the departure of Paulinka Survila. She was a known scholar, artist, musician, excellent teacher, mother of two young boys, wife of her childhood friend and first love, Eric Wachman, human rights activist, like-minded individual, one of the best friends I ever had, and so much more. Alice, could we have a minute of silence to commemorate uh, the eternal memory of those who left us prematurely. Can we do it now, please? Thank you. Interesting to note, my American son-in-law uh, saw the first version of this book. Uh, he commented on Paula's work, Chernobyl Radiation, page 158. He said, and I quote, that it is the most powerful illustration. I admit that I was very pleased with his opinion because this book is dedicated to the loving memory of Maria Paula Survilla. However, I dare think that every Belarusian artist, the ones that we have here and those which we have in our hearts, uh, is distinct. Their talents are unique to each other. Therefore, they do not compete and should not be compared, but cherished according to their chosen roads, specific techniques, and directions. Neither of the artists copied other artists, but each developed their personal stylistic and masterful way of life or painting. Because painting is their life. <laughs> in short, all of them together and individually brought Belarusian fine art to the highest standing in the world of fine art. And this is what the Belarusian fine art, time and time again, is all about. Once again, I would like to express genuine gratitude to my friends and colleagues who helped me, uh, who helped this work to materialize. I must thank uh, Madame Joanna Survila, 
she read several variants of the narratives and in her thoughtful way supported and encouraged my efforts. Thank you, dear friend. In the same breath, I thank Mr. Alesi Karalkevich and Ms. Ksenia Karalkevich. Ksenia, Ksusha, are you Oh, please stand up for a second. Thank you. Of course. Look at these covers. That's their production. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it masterful? Alena, what do you think? <laughs> Peter? Uh, he agrees. Ivanochka. Dziakui. Shira Dziakui. A lot of thanks. So, would anyone ever think that Belarusians are not talented? Not in this room, right? <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Indeed. The individuals mentioned above fully understand my mission. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Alice and Ksenia. Thank you, Ivonka. And of course, I'm grateful to my husband, Leo Rosenberg. You're not sleeping yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for his ongoing patience, love, and support. Indeed, the individuals mentioned above uh, fully understood my mission to present our country, Belarus, to an English-speaking world as it deserves, namely beautiful, highly educated, and one with many talents in various professions. And we are not lazy, right? No, we are <laughs> and now let's talk a little bit about the book. Once again, all the artists presented in the book were born in Belarus. And in Belarus, for those who didn't hear me or Ivanka. <laughs> and no matter where the destiny brought them, no one ever forgot their birthplace. In these terms, the three Belarusians of different times confirmed this notion that justified my choice to present in my book Belarusian artists of various generations who were born in Belarus. I'll start with Francis uh, Starina. Uh, the year of birth is not exact, but most continue, uh, consider it uh, 1485. The same with his uh, date of departure, 1540. Uh, I have a question mark. Um, Skarina, the beasts of the desert know from birth, uh, from birth their lairs. Birds that fly in the air know their nests. Fish swimming in the sea and in the rivers sense their whirlpools. Bees and their likes defend their hives. Similarly, people love the place they were born and brought up according to God's will. Then Chagall again, every artist was born somewhere, and even if a new environment influences him later, a certain essence, a certain ador of his native land will always be in his work. National belonging is something that everyone carries in his, her genes. Just being born signifies national, signifies national belonging. The place of birth is very important. Culture is equally important. Simple things such as childhood dreams are always connected with something in the past that, in turn, is connected with motherland. Vasil Bykov, 1924 
2003. Every book has a story, right? My book life began by buying a vast, very heavy, illustrated volume produced by a renowned American art historian, Professor uh, Mansbach, uh, entitled Modern Art in Eastern Europe from the Baltics to the Balkans, uh, years of 1890-1939. The years indicated by Professor Mansbach included the lifetime of the School of Paris, 1905-1939. What is the School of Paris? Many art critics randomly use this title. However, the name has nothing to do with any kind of school or schooling. The School of Paris was a loose amalgamation of modernist artists from worldwide. Many of them were born in historic Belarus and became the pillars of this school. You will see it uh, while reading the biographies. When I brought the book home and began to, uh, uh, to go through it, the pages uh, in the anticipation of seeing words and short bios or some mentioning of Belarusian-born artists, I found no mention, not a single one. Shagal, who is that? Uh, <laughs> Etc. Uh, such oversight of Belarus, uh, Belarus's contribution to world fine art is common among Russian Soviet uh, and Western art critics who either wholly neglect Belarusian artists or credit their uh, accomplishments to Russia and not even to Russian Empire, but to Russia proper and other countries around the world. For instance, the excellent uh, broken tone uh, reference, Dictionary of Art, provides more than 600 entries. Uh, alongside fine arts terminology, it includes short biographies of internationally known artists since the 13th century. 11 Belarusian-born modernist artists and their works are credited to Russia proper, not even to Russian Empire once again. The same treatment is evident in a lovely written and well-illustrated catalog of modernist uh, artists with an introduction written by uh, Nanette Rothschild entitled encounters with modern art. This catalog includes the works and short biographies of only five Belarusian-born artists. These artists are identified as, would you guess? C. C. Senior. <laughs> yes. Two weeks ago, I encountered Miss Caroline McLean's book, uh, Circles and Squares the lives and art of the Hampstead modernists. In her volume, where she describes, uh, describes works of only three Great Britain modernists, uh, namely Ben and Winifred Nicholson and uh, Barbara uh, Hepworth, the author states, uh, states they were influenced by Russian modernists. Guess who? Leon Bakst, Chaim Sutin, Marsha Gall and others. Clear? Or oh, really, I thought. <laughs> the only positive feelings after reading her book was uh, the satisfaction of my modest work, which includes uh, Belarusian-born artists. This lack of knowledge and scholarship brought the idea to write about the Belarusian fight art uh, in English and present its richness to the English-speaking world. Am I completely satisfied with this book? I am not. I wish I had included more artists who deserved to be in this volume. Second, uh, the book lacks an index, a necessary part of any scholarly work. 
For that, I don't have an excuse, only an, an explanation. I got physically tired and by the end of the production. And the press was pushing me from every single uh, side <laughs> at the time. So Belarusian fine art introduces the history and tells the story of a rich but little known of mine and many of yours, birth country. Belarus, where talented artists cre created an enormous number of artworks that substantially influence world, world art. The book provides biographies of close to 150 artists, not 200, unfortunately. <laughs> websites of their works and some illustrations of emigre artists who, due to political circumstances, had to leave Belarus at different times. Indeed, despite the remarkable role of Belarus as one of European modernism cradles in the visual arts, one does not encounter a single reference of Belarusian-born artists of their works throughout Mansbach substantial tom. A similar attitude is found in uh, Alexander Lieberman's, the artist in his studio, uh, Vladimir Petrov, Vladimir Petrov, and uh, Alexander Kaminsky, the world of art movement in the early 20th century Russia, and Evgenia Petrova's team, Mir Iskustva, Stalitio Vistovki Ruskich and Finskich Hudornikov, uh, the world of art towards the centenary of Russian and Finnish artists exhibition. Such oversight of Belarusian contribution, once again, is common mostly among Russian and Western art critics. By Russian, I mean mainly Soviets who either wholly neglect Belarusian-born artists or credit their accomplishments to Russia and other countries. Of course, there is a good number of redeemable art criticism. Among them is the literary heritage of Leon Bach, collaboratively produced by John Bolt, Anna Chernuhina, Olga Kovalova, and Elena Terkel. These scholars recognize Bach's origin, Belarus. The Dutch art historian and critic uh, Werner van der Belt and the French scholar Professor Claire uh, Lefoy piloted the work about Belarusian artists. Dr. van der Belt is not just an editor in chief. He is also one of six art historians and critics who substantially contributed to modern art in Belarus. The articles of his compilation are written in four languages, Belarusian first, Dutch second, English, and Russian. Van der Belt observes, and I quote, it's a very important quote, visual art in Belarus is not the same as in the surrounding countries, period. I share his views entirely. The five other contributors also share his ideas and concentrate on the originality of Belarusian artists' creativity, individuality, imagination, aesthetics, and intellectual soul searching. Focusing on 50 artists, not the three like the Belarusian, hist uh, like English uh, historian <laughs> did, from the 20th and 21st centuries, these art critics construct their analysis based on Belarus's historical and geographical realities and their subjects' education and, of course, artworks. The volume is enriched by very short artistic uh, biography, uh, artist biographies and 150 excellent illustrations. Claire uh, Lefoy, Ecole Artistique de Vitebsk, 1897-1923, uh, wrote uh, her book in 2007. Uh, this support work concentrates mainly on Ihuda Pen, Marshall Gall, and Kazimir Malevich. 
The book was translated into the Belarusian language and published in Belarus. Regarding, uh, regarding the scholarship about Vitebsk, let me quote Professor Carol uh, uh, Emerson about a superb work of Alexandra Shatskich, The Life of Art. And I quote, like Imperial St. Petersburg, Vitebsk is a cosmopolitan center whose cultural myth rivals its history. Unlike Petersburg, Vitebsk is ancient and tiny. Beginning with the visual artist Shagal Malevich and moving through sculpture, we share this excitement of a town functioning as a total work of art. So she mentioned that Vitebsk is no less history of Vitebsk. Uh, I suppose, than the pure, sure piece of art. That's powerful, isn't it? In the book presented today, uh, you will note an important uh, factor. Belarusian scholars, uh, uh, art critics, are ahead of most other Western and Russian art critics. They continually and passionately propagate Belarusian-born artists, their cultural heritage and artworks. They cover a significant lacuna of Russian and most European art criticism about the works and lives of Belarusian-born artists. Many Belarusian artists, particularly from the 18th century and throughout the tw 20th century, were either forgotten or deliberately renounced by foreign and even local rulers due to politics and historical events. Inv invasions, uprisings, revolutions, wars, the Holocaust, and various forms of dictatorship. Historical circumstances played a significant role in the artist's everyday and creative lives. Consequently, while exploring the development of visual arts in Belarus, my study offers an outline of Belarusian history, often concentrating on the Imperial Russia and Soviet eras and clarifying the reasons for Belarusian artists' choices to remain in their homeland, migrate, emigrate, or became exiles. This approach should, uh, shall help illuminate each historical period and explain the circumstances during which the artists presented and influenced their land's culture and, in many cases, the world's visual art. To conclude, I would like to applaud you for the initiative in sending the book's proceeds to Ukrainian needs. Thank you. It is a noble decision, and I am very, very proud of you all. Meanwhile, uh, I will propose uh, a few minutes break. Uh, and after it, uh, to start reading some excerpts uh, from the book, um, I'll begin with a biography of uh, Georgi Skripnichenko, page, uh, uh, page uh, 101. Uh, why Georgi? Because he was a great Belarusian patriot and incredible right, right, uh, artist with a nickname Belarusian Dali, not any less. I knew him personally, for he often frequented my home, where his best friend, Boris Valshow, uh, now it's his name, my sister's first husband, lived me, with my sister and me. My parents, uh, parents lived on the other side uh, of the city. At that time, he was uh, Jora, or Jorka. No one could imagine him to become a Жорж Скрипниченко родил, was born in 1940 in Nikolaev, it's Ukrainian city, as you know. 
he was born to the family of a Ukrainian amateur artist that moved his family to the ancient Belarusian city of Slutsk in 1945. The father encouraged the boy's inclination toward fine, uh, towards uh, fine art and sent him to the local studio of Vladimir Sadin. Uh, Alena, you know Sadin? Yeah? Uh, 1924, 2010. His mother was a well-known Belarusian artist and his, uh, in his own right. So was his mentor. Uh, uh, Sadin himself created uh, more than a thousand pictures, a thousand uh, paintings, sorry. Sadin was also a first-rate educator who taught many distinguished Belarusian artists. Uh, they inherited uh, their mentor's love for Belarusian history and ethnography. His education activities are comparable to Pence and Kruger's. Like them, he taught his students academic drawings and paintings. However, most of his disciples preferred modernism. Once Chagall said that Penn, who was uh, an academic type of uh, uh, painter, uh, was uh, a great uh, uh, academician who gave life to many modernists. <laughs> George Skripnichenko continued his art education in Minsk Art College under jo uh, Joseph Edelman, and then Leonid uh, Shmelov. Uh, Skripnichenko was equally fluent in realism and surrealism, but preferred the latter from the beginning of the 1980s. Like most uh, Sadian students, Skripnichenko held art shows in Belarus and abroad. International private collectors and museums have many of his works. By the middle of the 90s, um, Belarusians had more opportunities to travel overseas, and the artists visited Europe and North America. Once in Montreal, he was introduced to a prestigious art gallery, impressed by Skripnichenko's portfolio. The owner immediately offered him a huge, lofty contract. The conditions that provided exclusive rights to all of the artist's artworks were not acceptable for George Skripnichenko, and he refused offer. His free spirit exemplified an instinctive resistance to being confined by any foreign gallery. In one of his interviews, Skripnichenko remembered Boris Zaboro's comment during the latter's first visit to Belarus from France, and I quote, you don't know how lucky you are to live among your own people, end of quote. Skripnichenko was happy at home despite apparent difficulties during his country's Soviet and especially post-Soviet period. Uh, the artist's popularity continues to grow in Belarus. In 2015, 23 Skripnichenko's uh, uh, artworks were posthumously presented presented in Minsk open air exhibition, The Artist and the City. More than two million people, imagine, more than two million people visited this exhibition. Ain't bad for Belarusians, huh? After five months of beautifying the center of Minsk, the exhibit traveled to Vitebsk, Slutsk, and four other Belarusian cities. George Skripnichenko was a prolific artist who left behind thousands of paintings. As mentioned, his primarily artist, artistic style became surrealism, 
Consequently, the artist was nicknamed Belarusian Dali, as we said, in his country. His paintings are known for their imaginative and metaphysical communication of fabulous colors. A mix of various styles and perfect composition. His artwork, uh, artwork uh, titles are self-explanatory in his 1981 triptych. A peaceful land, images of native country, and allergy, uh, uh, allegory of light. This one was uh, done in 1984. Similar approaches are noted in the uh, dedication to, um, uh, to Mastak Silishuk, 1986, Ecological Equilibrium, 1989, Skarina, of course, Belarusian artist, and not to uh, make a portrait of Skarina. He wouldn't be a Belarusian, right? <laughs> Skarina in the Motherland, uh, produced in 1990, Chernobyl, 1990, Lost Dreams, 1991, Melancholy, uh, uh, he wrote uh, a, a few uh, paintings under this title in 1990, 1995, Last Games, 1995, Tolerance, 1996, Time of My Life, uh, 1996, The Solid Land, 1997, towards the 200, uh, 200th anniversary of Mitskevich. As you know, Mitskevich pronounce, uh, pronounced uh, in uh, France, where he was teaching Slavic languages at his time. Uh, that among all the Slavic languages, the most beautiful, the most uh, uh, full is the Belarusian language. So uh, the French uh, students heard about it already in the 19th century. So let's just continue with the idea. <laughs> So uh, Mitskevich, uh, 1998, coexistence, 1980-2000, a chain of cruelty, 2000, Russia's motherland, 2001, and many, many others. The artist also excelled in the graphical uh, genre. Thus, he authored uh, a series of graphics, uh, graphics entitled uh, as the following, The Greatest Figures of Belarusian Culture. 1979, and Artists' Gifts to the Motherland, 1994-1997. Skripnichenko was generous and often uh, gave away his paintings to people who could not afford to, to buy them. Despite his peers and art, art lovers' recognition and active participation in local and international art shows, Skripnichenko was thrice, three times, refused membership in the Belarusian Artists' Union because of his involvement in uh, pure Belarusian culture. But actually, he spit on them. And he didn't want to have anything to do with the Artists' uh, Union. After the third uh, attempt, he never applied again. However, due to his friend's initiatives, the artist was granted the union membership automatically in 2001. Cambridge University, remember the name? It's a good university. Cambridge University named Skrip Skrip uh, Skripnichenko Man of the Year in 2005 a right honor to a right person, don't you think? Uh, and now I think that because we are so lucky and we've got three wonderful uh, artists here, maybe they want to talk about uh, 
their own practice without interference of a teacher who cannot make a straight li a line. <laughs> Alena, would you start? Добрый день всем. Я не готовился специально. Спадеюсь, если я буду размовлять про свое мастерство, это будет довольно легкое без без подготовки, потому что это довольно такие это familiar subject for me. Вот. Кали у кого есть есть некие особные питания, я с великой с великой интересностью э, хотела бы их почуть и отказать. Тому э, будь ласка, коли у вас есть нечто. Сдается ее рачность и моя. Я хотел запытаться, что наступное. Что что будет наступное? Какие картины будут? Какие картины будут наступные? Зараз я хотела бы развить трошки тематику такую больше белорусского на напрамку я один из моих экзам вот это моя праца с погоней тому я хотела бы еще заработать несколько речи у этом напрамку как мы могли их уживать у мерчи, как мы могли нечто друковать. Это могли быть плакаты, это могут быть майки, что-то, что я еще, потому что, как мне зараз сдается, у нас явно не дохоп такого кшталту речей. Вот. И тому мы плануем за Леной Левонченко открыть на реште интернет-краму. Вот, и было бы добро, как там было некое наполнение, right? так. Вот, и зараз это то, над чем я працую. А те есть у тебя твои самые любимые творы? Те у тебя все творы твои любимые? То есть, на вот из этой комнаты, может, ты можешь открыть что-то в стиле? А, видите? Души? Нет. А, Тяжко так сказать, потому что на Калибельме долго глядишь на что-то, так я ну трошки уже, я ну так начинаю, я начинаю устамляться от того, что я бачу. А лишь у меня есть, например, вот эта картина с озером, это на реште это не озеро, это залив, это фрейон. Так, вот, потому что это Атлантик Кебек, и для меня это вельми такие чудовные, вельми теплые воспоминания, потому я за все догляжу на эту работу, и она мне вельми так вельми добра отбивается на, на моей душе. Мне но в последнем часе мы вельми много э, вандровали по Канаде, и, конечно, природа, она настолько незвычайная, она вельми много уваги на себе отбирает. А лишь я гляжу, что Атава так само, у меня было довольно много прац, але много уже пошло, что-то продалось, чего-то нет, и... Под час, на вот люди меня, мои клиенты, на вот штурхают на то, как бы я звернулась до этой темы, потому что, ну, я ну вызываю некие такие приемные эмоции, мне, потому что я, по первых пишу о основном э, зимние пейзажи. Зимние пейзажи э, колядного часу, там вельми много лампочек, вельми приемно. И это все робить, робить уражение Christmas, 
Это э, свято, чакание некого цуда, и тому, мне кажется, это вельми... люди отчувают, и тому это вельми так приемно за все э, разглядать. And, uh, я хотела сказать великий дякую Зинаида за то, что вы заработали эту великую працу, и я вельми удачно дякую, дякую великий и мои виншавани, и так само я вельми удачно и тем, тем фактом, что я являюсь одним из мастаком у вашей книги. Тут, по-моему, уже все остановились от промов. <laughs> Я не буду долго. На мой взгляд, нельзя было найти лепшего часа, чем публиковать такую книгу сегодня. Видите, по Беларуси появилась посередине двух злодеев, Путина и Лукашенко. И, и, и он пытается сделать все, что может, как замазать белорусское имя, и полностью сделать это, как бы сам это одна страна все это делает. И в этом смысле книга, опубликованная сейчас, я думаю, тайминг очень, очень добрый, потому что это кажется, что Беларусь живет, есть белорусское мастерство в диаспоре, и, и, и корни идут далеко, как все это означено в книге. Очень чудовно. Идея чудовна. Могло быть больше, могло быть еще, но это, это вядомо, да, это тяжко довольно. Итак, это чудовная антология у всего, что рабилось за пошние больше, чем сто лет. Что бы я хотел сказать, что трошки о себе в том смысле, что я родился в 47-м году, довольно давно, и у Минску было такой тяжкое, тяжкий час. Минска не было, больше-меньше, несколько будинков осталось. И аллея была, и одно было место у Минска, которое как магнит притягивало у всех, кто как мог малевал. И это была студия Минского палаца пионеров. У нас там был такой мостак, который я вел, это Сергей Петрович Катков. И вы не поверите, когда я сейчас буду называть у всех, кто из этой студии вышел, это весь крем для крем, для лепшее, что только отбылось в белорусском мастерстве. Да, 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 я веду, я веду. И, и я, и он давно помер, и, але я вельми удачный в своей судьбе, что так, что я там опронулся в этой студии, и там были такие э, вельми интересные становища, когда был кто-то был там 6 годов, 7 годов, малый, и, и рядом с тобой мог сидеть мастак, знакомитый мастак, э, и, и они все приходили, и было такое сэнерджи, такое было чудовное. Мы, мы, глядели, мы не столько глядели, что там треба работать, сколько глядели, что робят наши соседи справа и слева. И друг друга подтримливали, друг друга. Было, было чудовно, было в этом сенсе. И э, сярод э, мастаков был мой добрый сябр, Саша Зименко, ху был чудовный керами, ой, он живет, да ему Бог здоровья. Вот. И так само, я думаю, Борис Заборов. Нам колисти пошанцевало, мы были с Зиной у его студии в Париже, в 85-м году это было. И а, до того я был в его студии в Минску, на Первомайской. И он мне тогда сказал, что он хочет иммигрировать, что... а у него уже были медали из Лейпцигской ярмарки, он чудовный чудовный график был. И, и он сказал мне тогда, что он, тут, тут ему тяжко дыхать во всех смыслах. 
и по пятой графе, и по прошлым главам, по всему. И он выросил, что он уедет. И он сказал, тогда, я уеду только, когда у меня это отбудется, и мне повезет уехать в Париж. Вот такое у него было мара такая. И она здеснилась. Там много обставин в этом. А ему вельми пошанцевало. Его первая персональная выставка была на Ле Русен, это самый центр артистичного хотя в Париже, и у галереи Клод Бернар, вече с пробли до Парамаунтов у всех галерей Парижа, и первую выставку таким местом. И он вельми интересную речь сделал, что вельми тяжко не уражить Париж, там все было, это родимо у всех, у всех, у всех направлений, у сучасного искусства, и импрессионисты, постимпрессионисты, метронисты, все, все там жили, все там працевали. И я сделал чудовную серию картин, у, в этот час был живопис, или такие бельми графичный живопис, построены на, побудованы на в старых фотографиях, которых он нашел у себя дома, это фотографии его предков с слонима, и, и он, и он на, на, на базе этих фото сделал, сделал судонную выставку, которая была продана в первую же ночь, в первый же вечер, и он так пропел, и он так не к себе поднял на самый, на самый высший уровень, який только можно было подняться. И он уже давно не, не працевал с, с галереями коммерциальными, ему это не требу уже было, только с музеями. И, и в некий момент он был самый дорогий мостак Франции. Такие, такой интересный момент. Вельми, вельми. И он мой кумир в мостатстве. И и так далее. И, так, да. и много-много, когда я сейчас про всех буду говорить, кто в нашей студии в этой был, это тут и так уже устамились. Так что, вот, я очень медячный э, э, Зиня за то, что я отрывался в таким чудовым товариществе, в этой книге, в этом зале. И очень чудовый, чудовый час я опубликовал эту книгу. Это страшенный час для нашей родимы был, и то, что отбывается там. И... Ну вот такое. Так что я еще раз дякую. что я так вот, да. что я молю от самого маленства, але перерыва, мела великие перерывы. После Чернобыльской, Чернобыльской катастрофы я 8 годов не брала пензлов. И так само теперь, как после смерти моей Паулинки, дочки, не, не, маю, не маю инспирации, скажем. Тяжко вернее браться за малявание. Але, а прича этого, я все жить все за все дымела пензли недалеко, и даже когда профессионально я, <coughs> профессионально, я за это не зарабатывала грошей, шмат, криху только, когда <coughs> попадалась, але за все э, брала в дело в выставках, и э, э, особливо старалась э, показать белорусские темы. И даже, например, это я вон, это я вон, девчонка, что сидит в посередине, это моя дочка, Ганя позвала, и как я первую выставку сделала графики моей, дик написали у газеты, что как шкода, что я на весь час все пишет об иншей стране. <laughs> Одним словом, не хотели, как я, так, так, у Хебеку я не вельми мощно чули на это, как проговорить про их, да? так что, и тут у всех это, что вы видите, образы, у все есть белорусские темы. Это я речь, это я в Беларуси называю графикой. Я, графи, я завсюду хотела заниматься графикой, мне не завсюду подавалось. И мои рисунки чернилом и первым чернилом фактически меня до этого вели. Так? Но э, не, не было, не находила места, где могла работать и разом ходить вечером уже видеть эту речь. И только в 1979 году э, почула, что открыла э, Отова 
School of Art открыла студія для графіки. І я того часу ходила до 86-го року, кожен тиждень, раз на тиждень, один вечір ходила туди, і я за цей час зробила, ну, крихку більше за це, але але не вірні шмат, тому що це велизарна праця, це робити. Мастаки, які не займаються, зробити до вещі до кінця серію друг, серію графіки може зайняти ще кілька тижнів. Бо це не тільки справа створити образ на жалежі і його довести до кінця. А після друг сам по собі займає час. Бо це все я сама друкувала. А прача Мірського замку, який друкував один не Мірського, вибачте, Наварицького замку, який друкував один спеціаліст. Усе інше я друкувала сама. І фактично гэтую я вам показала гэтую речі, тому що це те, що я найбільш люблю у моєї творчості. Це графіку. А прича гэта так само завсюди малявала і олейними фарбами, і тепер, коли маю кришку часу, тепер, не тепер, але до пошнього часу, брала уділу у виставку з акварелями. Акварелі найменш часу займає, і коли маєш яку ідею, дик найлегше зробити. Дик я а прача гэтага, навіть олейними фарбами тепер нічого не роблю. Ну і не ведаю, коли прийде охвота знов братися за малювання, гэта не ведаю. Малювання – така реч, яка виходить з душі, правда? Гэта є реч, яку, а прача, коли ви робите ще комерційним мастаком, і коли робите, 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 що? Коли ви справді хочете нещо виказати те, що в вашій душі, дик треба чекати на інспірацію. Чоловік це завжди не може робити так кожен день і рані на раніці до вечора. І діля гэтага, вахчима, прийде час, коли я переживу гэту мою біду, і тоді вазьмуся знову за малювання. Дякую. Well, I guess on this note, we're going to finish it. And now, if somebody wants to sign the book, just please welcome to it.